builders of the JMP Cycles Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show. But to help me introduce you to these builders, I want to bring a man up who is the stunt double for Gimli in Lord of the Rings. He harbors fugitives in his beard. He's the only white person now living in Southern California. The one, the only editor of Hot Bike Magazine, Jeff Holt. What's up, buddy? How are you, brother? Good. Now that's self-described. He says he's he, oh, he, yeah. he has to look Mexican now to live in his uh, home. It's all right, man. I grew up a, a poor white Mexican white guy. Yeah, that's right. So that's cool. Hey, uh, we're gonna bring four of these guys up. Which four do you want to bring up first? I don't know. I you know I like uh, Kyle Shorey. You know you can never shut that guy up. So he needs I, to come up. I first. can't ever understand what he says. Kyle Shorey, come on up. Hey, another guy you can't ever understand what he says is Carl Pusser. Yes. Carl Pusser, come I on I do up. love Carl Pusser. No, you, you can sit wherever you want. Yeah, you man. do whatever you want, man. Do whatever you want. We can sit on my lap, well, We can baby. all sit down there. Let's just all sit over here. Yeah, we can all sit down here. We'll fit. Uh, I think Jordan Dickinson should come up. Nice, uh, nice kid from uh, this area. Uh, hometown boy. Good-looking kid. Look at him. Well, listen, we need a young guy, too, don't we? Let's get Bill Dodge up here. Oh, my man, Bill Dodge. A young Compton's guy. finest right here from the C, P -T. From the C. I'm going to do this. You guys sit there. I'll, I'll sit over here. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. How's that look? Uh, actually, my butt's kind of big, so. You want me to get yours? Yeah, give me the chair. Watch out. Get out of my way. It's, it's on stage, a fly, man. You know. It's not your stage. I invited you here. Here. How okay. dare you, sir? There. We're organized. Yeah. We did it. We customized the stage. You know how we do it. Listen, uh, these guys, you know, every show, we do 10 shows. We've got, you know, 40, 50 builders that come, and they bring what, they, what they've what they been working on. And uh, it, it really is the jewel in the crown of the Progressive International Motorcycle Shows, JMP Cycles, Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show. And this is the Nationals. So how many of you got now, Carl? You were a you're you're VIP in it this year. Uh, you're a past winner, so you got to be a judge. Look at that. So I know he's he's a judgy kind of guy this year. So so, uh, but uh, the big prize in Thank freestyle. Oh, we got another microphone. Big big prize in freestyle this year is ten thousand dollars. That's around. a pretty big deal. That's a lot of money. I don't care who you are. And uh, so, but let's let's find out who you guys are. We'll start with you down there, young man. I'm Bill Dodge. I have a company called Bling Cycles out of Daytona Beach, Florida, and I'm make my own animals. I guess. There you go. <laughs> All right. Who have we got next to you? I'm uh, Jordan Dickinson from Minneapolis, Minnesota, with uh, Union Speed and Style. I'm Carl Pusser, Walking Tall Cycles, uh, little little shop outside of uh, Peoria, Illinois. There you go. Uh, Kyle Shorey, Speed Foundry of Texas out of Fort Worth. Uh, I do just, I got some custom stuff I'm judging also, so. Yep. Oh, that's right, you're VIP in it this week too. I got yeah, powder on my beard. You gotta remember. I, got, yeah. I know, I see some. VIP. Tell people about it. Seems me. like you and I see each other every week anymore though, so. That's right, so it's just you guys, that's right. Yeah, now, uh, how many of you guys do this full time? It's your full time go, okay? And, that's uh, pretty rare these days. That know? is pretty rare. It's tough. It's tough to make a living doing this. I, I picked on Bill uh, last year. I told everybody he was a millionaire, which is why his uh, logo is a diamond for Bling Cycles. I told everybody he was a millionaire, and everybody believed me, and they walked around saying, oh, he's really humble for being a millionaire. I said, no, nah, man, he's broke as hell. That's why he's so humble. No, but. Are you a hundredaire? Sometimes. Sometimes. A hundredaire sometimes. There you go. Now. What did you bring to the show, Bill? I brought an Indian Scout, uh, 2016 Indian Scout. Uh, it's in a dealer competition, but I put it in here because I wanted to bring something that I never do. I don't ever do brand new Indians. I mean, I do, water yeah, water cooled, downdraft fuel injection, things like that. I build old pan heads and fun stuff, and I thought I'd bring my Scout that they asked me to do. I did it in six weeks and every hour of those six weeks of days. <laughs> and uh, 
It's pretty cool. It's a fun little bike. Yeah, well, and it shows too, man. It's really nice. And yeah, I gotta tell you, if you if you want to kind of see how Indian should have built that bike, <laughs> Bill Dodge's uh, bike is kind of the case in point for how cool you can make an Indian Scout. Well, and I'm I'm looking forward to it because uh, all the parts you did, everything you did on that bike, you can re you can put it back to factory stock, just unbolting and bolting you. For the most of it, yeah, but not all of it. Not all but of it. The thing about it is, is like there's a lot of people out there doing those bikes, and they're just trying to make it look like a, a Harley or something else. And I thought it should have its own life. Yeah. It, it well, it's kinda, it's a great platform. Yeah, you yeah. really Surprisingly do that. good platform to build off of. It really it, is. It was a hard one at first, but once I took everything away from it and just came down to the core of the bike. It's an amazing motorcycle, yeah. really. I mean, it's... And they ride really good, too. They ride good. They got good horsepower. They stop well. It's all good. All there's around. No, there's no real bad other than, you know, everybody has a different style or what they want to look at or how they want to ride. Right. Absolutely. Now, that you were one of 37 guys that were invited to do that for them. Is that correct? Yeah, there was 37 dealers, and uh, one of the dealers was, you know, thought enough ahead to ask me to do it because... The bike he wanted was out there, my bike. Yeah. And he couldn't tell anybody what he wanted, so he just went to somebody that builds bikes like he wants. There you and go. All right. I cool. made what he wanted. And he mind you, it's an international thing, too. It's not just the United States. Like, it's the world over. And yeah. There's and guys in Germany making crazy Indian scouts. And, I mean, it's uh, if you haven't seen it online, uh, you can definitely check it out on the Indian side. It's, it's pretty flooring. It, uh, there's everything from guys just switching out the wheels to – full-on crazy custom builds you know like like bills and like these crazy guys in germany that are doing yeah, that stuff that, with them that guy in france there's a guy in france yeah, that made exactly yeah, oh, he's yeah. A crazy one too jordan what'd you bring uh, i brought a couple of bikes out um uh, 51 pan head that we built all from scratch uh, we made the frame the gas tank the fender all that stuff um, and we also brought out a knucklehead that has a uh, newer sns engine in it and same thing with that. Everything on it's hand fabricated. Um, we messed with the uh, engine a little bit on it, cut it apart, reshaped it kind of how we wanted it. Did sort of a, a take, our take on like a some of the vintage Harley race bike, uh, factory race bike stuff, uh, but still kind of got a modern feel to it. It's a very rideable bike. So yeah, around the offices we we call Jordan Captain Smooth. Oh, yeah. all his bikes just got the flow. They do. You know, they, they're all, you know, you can look at them and be all, hey, that's really cool. Or, hey, that bike was a stock Harley that you took a bunch of stuff off of. And then you start really looking at all the stuff from the, from the tiniest thing on the foot controls to, you know, how he, how he does the headlight or the front end. Like, the, the, the kid just has an eye, but not being obtruse and not being flashy like it's just well, you know one of the greatest compliments i think a, a huge compliment not the greatest compliment but a huge compliment to pay to a builder is when somebody looks at your bike and they're like oh did that come from the factory that right. way because you can't tell what they did bill's bike the scott it, it could be something that indian like did said, it's the one they should have built it's the one they should have built jordan's bike you look and say oh i didn't remember harley building those tanks they but they didn't, they didn't yeah. yeah they didn't so Nah, so, it's really cool, man. Now you guys have a, you guys, guys are wearing a different set of shoes this week. What do you think about the offering of bikes here? I tell you what, the, the bikes here this year are so refined this year. I mean, the style of every, everybody's style, each builder has their own style, and, and it's every one of them so refined. It's it's. Uh, I'm glad I'm not competing this year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, buddy. What do you think, Kyle? That's basically what I was just going to say is, I mean, I, you pick and choose your years where you get into this stuff. And when the, there's this caliber of bikes, I, I, I ain't that good. <laughs> I admit it. Well, but, uh, you know, there is just amazing, amazing stuff here. There has been kind of a shift over the last few years of, of kind of going. We kind of got into the rat roddy kind of style, you know, where everything was really rough and. But it is becoming more refined. Guys are starting. We're really seeing a resurgence of that, uh, of uh, really nice hand-tooled stuff. We're seeing a really nice kind of revival of uh, true machinery. You know, we're, we're really respecting the parts. Well, I, really I think like a lot see. of these guys are growing up. Like, they're, we're all kind of elevating our game because we're getting older and we're learning our craft better. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the guys that are in these shows, a ton of them aren't. Well, he's probably the youngest one in the show, but 
they're growing, you know, we're just get, getting better at what we do and we want to show it. And these guys are just going so far beyond. Yeah. It's really the uh, attention to detail that I've been seeing. Craftsmanship and attention to detail, which has been, you know, you don't buy a bunch of parts and paint them a different color or plate them a different color and slap them on. And that's been going on far too long. Like to see guys, you know, hand machining, hand, you know, even tooling their own leather, that which they've never had before, or, you know, painting and plating. Like it's, it's, the, it's full game on now for guys, you know, and it's really cool to see that. And the bagger guys, you know, they, they've been taking that thing, you know, every way f outer space, you know? Yeah. Like those guys have been yeah, amazing. And, and it used to be that those guys would buy the same four products from the same four guys and slap them on there and put some crazy paint job on. But those guys are hand doing their metal bags now. I mean, it's it's to see that kind of craftsmanship on a, on a bike that has as many parts as a car now, it's a whole other level. Yeah, you know, you look at Corey Ness's bike over there, the fairing on it, which most people, when they walk by, oh, that's fiberglass or plastic. It's aluminum, and it's inside and out. It's finished on both sides. I mean, you got to really, these baggers aren't just beat out of, aren't, ma aren't laid out of fiberglass anymore. No, that's beautiful. Not at all, That's man. beautiful metal work. It's really know? cool to see it. You know, if you if you don't like the big, big wheel thing or not, like, you got to understand, like, that's, you're taking a brand new $25,000 motorcycle and cutting it completely apart and putting it back together. And that's actually, in the 60s, that's how choppers were done. That's it. You know, people thought people were crazy for doing that then. So it's, it's for me to see that, it's par for the course, yeah. you know? And I, I like seeing that, man. It's Get crazy stuff. with it. It's good stuff. We World now. Yeah, those, the baggers and the way they're doing them these days, don't get me wrong, like him, Maybe not my style, but the work that they do just reminds reminiscent reminds me of coming up in the '60s, '70s, '80s of lowriders. Lowrider, yeah, I'm man. Right up, you know that's what it is. It's really cool to see, man. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand like where they're coming from and how cool that that whole style of bike is. And I like seeing you know a lot of people bringing a lot of baggers here in Chicago. Absolutely. Listen, we got four more guys we're gonna bring up before we get you guys off the stage, though. If somebody out here, if you were gonna tell them, hey. Uh, they want to build a custom motorcycle. They've never done it. They want to try their hand at it. Uh, they think they've got a good skill set. What would your suggestions be, starting with Bill? Somebody wants to customize a bike. What, what do you mean? Like, they just want to make their bike special. Well, it, don't go after what everybody else does. Do what you want. That's make it your style, advice. not somebody else's. That's the biggest thing. Most people, they, they go buy a new bike, and they see somebody's bike, oh, that's cool, and they start making it like that guy's bike. You make it yourself, bro. That's whether it. it's whether you're about. buying parts from somebody else or asking somebody to do something for you, that's fine. But do it your style. Good job. Yeah, that's nice advice. Couldn't have said it better myself. I would uh, <clears throat> agree with Bill 100. percent And one thing I would add to it is, uh, don't be concerned about whether or not it's going to be the cool thing. Uh, just like you said, do what you like. Do your thing. All right. Yep. I think the biggest thing on, on uh, building a bike is your imagination. Uh, let your imagination be your creativity. You know, look at it, see it, get into it, you know. I mean, have your own style. It's your bike. Create it yourself. Yeah, good job. Good job. Uh, my biggest thing that I want to tell everybody is... Is to buy parts from Shade Tree Fabric. Buy my part. <laughs> no. Uh, Walk out, of, buy your bike at the dealership or whatever, the bike that you like, and then walk out of the dealership and buy your parts. Buy your parts at independent builders, independent shops. It's, you're going to get more quality parts. You're going to get something that's more unique. And there's so many of us out there selling stuff right now that it's, it's just, it's not chrome made in Taiwan. Don't and get sucked in by the American chrome specialists. businesses. <laughs> yeah. walk and American people that That's put their right. kids through school yeah. that put food walk, on the table. Walk past the, the piles of chrome and the parts counter and, and leave the dealership and go buy stuff. They're making enough money on the bike to begin with. Let yeah, the little man. guys make the parts. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of the JMP Cycles Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show. Appreciate you guys coming out. Now get off the stage. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>